pieces greatly separate Rousey from the rest of Deltarune's characters, including the secret bosses that, while having meta-knowledge, never explicitly show knowledge of the player's presence. The player's presence. In my last video, I covered the dream that inspired Toby Fox to create Deltarune, and how this theme could be seen in his works following it. If you watched it, you would know that I interpreted the quote, the edge of the shadow, where reality and dream meet, as the player and the game essentially interacting on a meta level. Given the importance of this insight on Deltrin's direction and story, I would like to expand upon it in this video. I plan to do this by looking deeper into the complex relationships between the three characters with the most connection to the player's presence. Chris, because of their literal connection to the player, Ralsei because of his unique knowledge of this connection, and of course the soul, as it's the analog of the player's actions in Deltarune. Other characters will certainly be a part of this in the future, but currently these are the only three that we know enough about to understand the role they currently play in the meta-narrative. First I'd like to explain what makes the player an actual character of Deltarune. Through aspects of ludonarrative harmony, Deltarune basically forces the player to play by the rules of its universe. To give an example, you require a leap in logic to play as Mario curb stomping Goombas, as you in fact are not Mario curb stomping Goombas. But in Deltarune, you do not require a leap in logic to be yourself interacting with another universe through forcing a vessel inside universe to act on your behalf based on inputs you give it through a mysterious method of communication between said universes managed by an entity who seemingly exists in between them. <gasps> If you found all that confusing, I suggest watching Andrew Cunningham's video on how Toby Fox achieves this in Undertale. But ultimately what I'm getting at is that the player, which I'll now be referring to as the Soul, is a diegetic character in Deltarune. Anyway, speaking of vessels, what's Chris's relationship with the Soul? Now, you probably already see the elephant ripping its soul out in the room, but I can assure you that Chris's relationship with the Soul isn't entirely rebellious. There's always the question of why they put it back, but this could easily be dismissed by the fact that Chris kind of needs the soul to live, or at least needs the soul to have a will to live. But that doesn't explain why Chris, in this moment of autonomy, does not choose to do something like, I don't know, telling their mom they're possessed? Mom, wake up, I'm possessed. Jokes aside, Chris isn't actually trying to get rid of the soul, and for good reason. During the tutorial, Rousey describes the soul as holding the fate of the world, which makes sense. Not to rag on Chris, but they aren't the one that dodges attacks, makes strategies, or even seals the fountains. The soul does. In this context, it doesn't really matter who the soul belongs to. It's under the player's control, and Chris can't get rid of it without dooming their world in the process. Though despite the unfortunate nature of this dynamic, Chris may actually be at least a little okay with it. If you look at the Snowgrave dialogue options, you'll notice that they're rather polarizing. On one side you have what the player wants to say, and on the other you have what Chris wants to say. Why I bring this up is that this only happens when the player is clearly going against what Chris wants. Normally there's no real telling what options Chris desires, which leads me to believe that normally they're at least indifferent to what option the player chooses. If that weren't the case, there would frequently be major contrast in these dialogue options. Ultimately, I would conclude that the relationship between the soul and Chris is unfortunate, but they appear to be indifferent to it given the circumstances, as long as you're not doing Snowgrave. Though I think I speak for all of us when I say that I hope in future chapters we'll be able to communicate with Chris, possibly through something like the dialogue options. Now that I've covered Chris's relationship with the character people think they dislike the most, it's time to cover Chris's relationship with the character people think they dislike the second most. Again, you probably see the elephant drinking tea in the room, which is actually where I'd like to start. Most people see Chris being healed only 60 HP from Rousey tea and write it off as them disliking him. It's fucking disgusting. But they fail to realize that when Chris drinks Noel tea, they're healed 70 HP, which given their childhood friends, 70 HP certainly doesn't mean they dislike each other. So given the 10 HP difference from childhood friends, 60 HP from Rousey tea certainly doesn't carry any explicit disliking. Which is odd seeing how Chris definitely knows Rousey is just going along with the whole control thing. Which is a good segue to Rousey's relationship with the soul. We've now made it to the part of this theory that relates the most to my last one, so I'd very much recommend you go back and watch it if you haven't already. Rousey's relationship with the soul, as you probably have already seen, is very, very interesting. He shows the player unconditional kindness, which, as depressing as it may seem, is very suspicious. I have already gone over the fact that Rousey outright says the soul holds the fate of the world, which is at least a little telling of why he views the soul so highly, but there's something deeper to it. During the scene in Chapter 1, Lancer says that he feels fulfilled just by walking next to the fun gang, which Rousey responds to by saying it's a darkness purpose to assist lightners, and that doing so is the only way for them to feel fulfilled. I'll get to how this relates to the soul in a second, but let's first look deeper into what this means. Lightners are portrayed in Deltarune similar to how humans are portrayed in Undertale. Both are stronger and more determined than their darkner and monster counterparts, respectively. What ties us back to the soul is that the dynamic between the NPCs in Deltarune and the soul is identical to darkness and lightners which I think is the root to why Rousey views the soul so highly. 
He wants them to feel that they have agency. He bakes some cakes. Heck, he blushes when his sprite overlaps with the soul, which is exactly analogous to Lancer feeling fulfillment just by walking next to the lighters. At first, this may seem wholesome and all, but the problem is that this dynamic is completely one-sided. He does anything to appeal to the player, like giving them a trash can to throw away more of his manuals, saying it's okay to hit him, but probably most concerning of all, he completely disregards Chris's suffering during the Snowgraver or after the Spamton Neo fight. If I had to guess, those secret conversations he has with Chris are exactly like the conversation he had with Lancer about how you can only truly feel fulfilled if you assist the soul. This intertwinedness is exactly why I see the relationships between these three characters as, well, a triangle. I know this puts Rousey in a bad light, but I would still disagree with those who think he is evil. This concerning behavior of him idolizing those who he feels greater than him seems to be less of a sign of evil and more the beginning of a character arc, in my opinion. A character arc that we've already seen develop in some ways. Like in the Asshole Tunnel of Love scene, where he essentially says meeting Chris and Susie has taught him to appreciate people for being who they are. While this isn't directly connected to Rousey's idolization, problem, I still think it's a sign of developing away from it. With this, I think I've come to a relatively complete understanding of Rousey's relationship with the soul, and like with Chris, it's very one-sided. Which actually makes a lot of sense given how early we are in Deltrin's story. You see, Deltrin's very keen on recording the player's actions. The more you play the game, the more data it has to understand you, and write NPC's reactions more accurately to your intentions. So in these early stages of Deltarune's story, the only accurate dynamics NPCs can have with the player is they're either silenced by them, hopelessly loyal to them, or just clueless altogether. Essentially, the game is working under the requirement of ludonarrative harmony, and as the story goes on and the game's data set of your actions increase, the closer you get to the edge of the shadow, where reality and dream meet. Don't worry, this isn't the outro yet. I'm doing this segment just to help get around the bullwhip effect of editing a video based on a voiceover I did a week ago, which itself was based on a script which I wrote like a month ago. Of course, over that time, things like my understanding of the topic and just generally my skill of making a theory progress, so I'm recording slash writing this at the end of the video's production as sort of a conclusion, so I'll quickly go over the main points of my video chronologically. I will make sure to mark chapters for the main points I'll be going through. I don't really have much to say about the player's presence, as it was a pretty cut and dry topic. Though with Chris's relationship with the soul, I would really like to hammer in the indifferent aspect of it, especially because it goes along with my thesis that NPCs' dynamics with the soul are one-sided due to the early state of Deltarune's story. Chris's relationship with Rousey is also one I'd like to clarify. The point I made about T-Theory turned out to be a bit weaker than I remembered. I will still die on the hill of Chris not disliking Rousey, but I certainly missed aspects of their dynamic, like Rousey's close appearance to Asriel. I would currently say that Chris's dubious friendship with Rousey is more focused on uh, calling into question things like the Asshole Tunnel of Love scene, where the game is very clearly pushing the player to choose options Chris would probably not be comfortable with, which would of course have more to do with the Triangle's dynamics as a whole. Rousey's relationship with the soul is still spot on in my opinion. The things I covered very well explain why he views the soul so highly in a way that he really utilizes who Rousey is as a character. And to end off with my ultimate thesis, I was first worried that simply saying NPC's dynamics with the player will develop over time would be seen as kind of a cold take, but the actual value in this thesis is the explanation to Chris and Rousey's one-sided dynamic with the player, and how Deltarune is developing towards its ultimate theme of Toby Fox's dream of reality and dream meeting. Anyways, that should be all I have to say for this theory, I hope I didn't lose you anywhere on it. Now to actually end the video, I would first like to say thank you for watching all the way through. I'm pretty proud of myself that I was able to get this video out about a month after the last one. And don't worry, this is taking into account all other stuff like school and work, etc. For my next video, I already have a loose idea of it. If it goes how I intend it to, it will be more divergent from other theories and hopefully develop into its own thing. But I guess that's everything. This should be going up around the time I hit 500 subscribers, so I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. It would be incredible if we could get to 1,000 subscribers by the time my next video comes out in probably a month from now. But anyways, thank you for watching, and goodbye.